So let's talk about roll film. Roll film is defined in Wikipedia as any type of spool wound photographic film protected from white light exposure by a paper backing as opposed to film which is protected from exposure and wound forward in a cartridge, meaning 35 millimeter film. Um, I, I think that 35 millimeter film is roll film, but uh, it's a special case of it. Um, I mean, it it's a certain width and is very long, and like roll film, and when you wind it into the cartridge, it rolls into a spindle. So it's a lot like uh, roll film, but you know, I, I guess just in common usage, people call this kind of film roll film and 35 millimeter film either 35 millimeter or 135. <clears throat> um, roll film was invented by a farmer in Wisconsin. His name was Peter Houston in 1881. Uh, interestingly, he ended up selling his, um, the licensing his film to an ex-bank teller whose name was George Eastman. So you never know what's going to happen. A farmer and a bank teller get together and create an industry. Um, Eastman licensed uh, Houston's film, and in 1888 he introduced his Kodak Number no. 1 box camera. Uh, you would buy the camera, which would come with a uh, hundred uh, exposure roll of film in it, shoot the hundred exposures, send the box and the film, the whole thing, the camera and the film back to, to Kodak, uh, who would refill it with a new roll of film and send it back to you and then process the, the negatives and, the, and make prints. Um, I guess uh, uh, Houston over the years had licensed or sold uh, quite a few of his patents. I think he had 20-something patents over the years, sold them to Kodak. And um, in 1912, his estate assigned the rest of, the, of his patents to Kodak. Um, earlier, though, before 1912, in 1901, Kodak uh, released the Brownie Number no. 2 camera and that came with uh, the newly released 120 film, or it used the 120 film that we still have today. This is a roll of 120. This is Kodak Tri-X 400 ASA, ISO. <clears throat> and um, <clears throat> this is the film that still prevails today in among roll film, and still, of course, readily available. Uh, one difference in those days was that the spools, the the spindle part of the spool was made out of wood and the end flanges were made out of metal. I think they went through a couple of iterations where eventually they became all metal and today they're plastic. Um, there were quite a few various and sundry roll foams and um, really what we have left is 120 foam uh, and sort of as a derivative of 120, 620, and 127 film. 120 film is still used uh, by almost every larger format camera, medium format camera, the professional cameras anyway. Um, a lot of other cameras, the older cameras, like the, uh, a lot of the uh, brownie cameras, brownie box cameras, like this, this one here. <clears throat> this is a Target Brownie 620. Uh, quite a few brownies use 620 film and a lot of the later brownies the Bakelite plastic brownies uh, used 127 film and part of the impetus for, for using for creating the 620 and the 127 film was to enable Kodak to make smaller cameras how exactly well that worked out I'm not sure because there were a lot of cameras that were just as small as some of these cameras like this. There were cameras that were smaller than that that used 120 film. So, um, <clears throat> uh, regardless, I'm, I'm going to concentrate on these three formats, 120, 620, and 127. Uh, there's another format called 220, which is basically 120 film that's twice as long. Uh, and I, I 
the, the purpose of coming out with a film like that would be the same same reason for coming out with a 36 exposure 35 millimeter film it's longer you can take more exposures without without changing the film <clears throat> so let's start with 120 film I have a little diagram here to show <clears throat> that uh, 120 film can be used in various cameras that have different image sizes and different aspect ratios. <clears throat> uh, there are cameras that uh, have the film run through the camera vertically, like this this Brownie camera I showed you before. The film runs through it vertically. Uh, other f uh, cameras, um, uh, like Hasselblad and whatnot, I believe, go vertically. And then other cameras like uh, RB67, um, various 6x9 cameras, the film goes through horizontally. And the way it works is that the limiting factor is this the edge to edge width of the film, which is, uh, I measured this triax, it was 61 millimeters. <clears throat> and the, the various sizes are determined by uh, this, this dimension here is fixed, obviously. And then for cameras that are going through the, the for films that are uh, going, cameras where the film goes through vertically, this would be like a um, six by four five. So the width is six and the height is four five. And that gives you uh, the images in Mimia 645 cameras and other cameras that have, uh, that use that format. A lot of them have the format as part of the name, like the Mimia 645. Then you have the, uh, the, the second, uh, more, uh, the popular format is the square format, which would be six by six centimeters. And <clears throat> then uh, other formats where the where the width is longer is greater than six centimeters. The film would have to go through the, the camera horizontally. So the six centimeter height or the width of the film is a limitation of the height of the frame. And then the width of the frame is dependent on just how how big the how far down the frame it goes. Um, <clears throat> The most common formats are 6x4.5, 6x6, 6x7, and 6x9. There's others, but those are the mo most popular. Um, the actual uh, dimension is not exactly 6 centimeters. Uh, for instance, um, the 6x45 is 56 millimeters by 41.5 millimeters. And from that, you get 15 or 16 exposures in a roll of 120. The 6x6 six six, uh, frames are 56 by 56 centimeter, uh, millimeters, and you get 12 or 13 exposures. The 6x7 are 56 by 67 millimeters, and you get 10 exposures. And then the 6x9 is 56 by 84 millimeters, and you get 8 exposures out of a, a roll of film, obviously. Some of these larger negative sizes use more of the film, so you get fewer exposures in a roll. So, um, <clears throat> obviously, the, these different formats also have different uh, aspect ratios. Like the six six by forty five gives you a one point thirty five to one uh, aspect ratio. The um, six by six is obviously one one to one. The six by seven are one and a quarter to one, and the six by nine is one and a half to one aspect ratios. So, great illustration, right? One thing about the that I always found ingenious about the 120 film is that the way the frames are counted in the cameras. A lot of the more modern cameras have mechanical frame counters, so it's, I'm not talking about that. But for instance, here's a, as I said before, a Kodak Brownie camera. And on the back of the camera, you have a an opening with a red filter over the top. I'm trying to get it so you can see. And um, when you put a roll of film in it, the You get to a certain point. You can see this is 
you see where that where that window is he'd be rolling and rolling and rolling all of a sudden you'd see these little arrows go by because that's up here and then you keep rolling and eventually you'll see the word Kodak go by and then that would be the first frame that's actually a one it doesn't look much like a one but that's the way they look so you gotta gotta kind of keep that in mind when you roll roll in for the first time that that's a one and it's not just a line then you keep rolling you take that picture you keep rolling and then you get two right so that two appears in that window right so uh, I'm sure you've noticed that on the back of this film there are more than one set of numbers so on the back here we have numbers for six by nine cameras six by six cameras and six by four five cameras so for instance let me show you another camera this is a Kodak 66 it's a folding camera made in the UK and on the back of this camera this is a 6x6 camera you can see that as opposed to this camera which has the uh, counter window close to the edge this camera has the counter window right in the middle so I just ran out of space on my iPhone oops so where was I so I've got this Kodak 66 camera and when you were running film through it it would instead of using the top row of numbers as in the case of the uh, Kodak Brownie camera it would use this set of numbers here so one would be there two three etc and as far as the six by four five numbers I, I don't, personally don't know of any cameras that have a six by seven six by four five format that have a little window in the back the only one i know of is this mia 645 i'm sure there must have been in order for them to put that on the back of the phone by the way the roll film here's that leader paper tape and if you unravel it at some point you see a piece of tape and then there's the film right there so in the case of the Mamiya 645 film, the width would be this, the height would be there, square. And for a film that's bigger than square, it would go down the film some distance. There are quite a few different formats. So let's load a roll of film on this Kodak 66. Pretend that this is new. When it's new there would be a piece of tape like that on the film. Like that on the film. Which you would cut off or rip off. Discard. Always make sure that you get rid of this don't leave it attached to the to the film I had one time I ruined a Mamiya 645 shutter by leaving this attached and it got loose inside the camera and it kept getting um, pushed into the the shutter which is a like a curtain shutter and uh, tore the shutter off of the, the camera body and then I couldn't get anyone to fix it so I ended up having to buy another body but uh, that's the brakes with uh, cameras these days sometimes you can't get them fixed unless it's digital so let's open up the back here and so here's the take-up reel on this side and here's where the film would go here's where the film still does go there's a little spring-loaded thingy here so basically you put the, the film in the bottom here and pull up on that knob and spring-loaded it catches the film and you pull the film across. Uh, this camera still has a knob that you can unscrew and pull up. So if you wanted to, you can put this 
tone into the take up reel this way and get the rolling started by hand and put this back in here and then put the roll back and then you'd start you roll it up a little bit until you're sure that it's taken and close the back and now if I can make sure that the camera picks this up I'll start rolling so you can see the counter go by and at some point you'll see arrows there's an arrow see that and then you keep rolling there's a couple arrows then at some point a little bit later you'll see the words Kodak there they are and then like I said be careful because that first that first frame doesn't look like a one but there it is it looks like a couple of dashes so now you're on the first frame you take that first exposure then you roll it up to the next frame it says Kodak again and you'll see two so there's the next frame etc etc one thing about a lot of these old cameras is that it's easy with roll film with some of these roll film cameras to do double exposures or to forget where you are as far as the rolling advancing the film and skip a roll a skip a frame or something like that and um, there were some cameras where there were built-in safeguards against uh, double exposures and whatnot that uh, were fairly complicated I know that this uh, <clears throat> Zeiss camera has a, a safety so that you have to advance it to the next frame before you can press the, the shutter release down again things like that so um, <clears throat> you would roll the film all the way to the end and I don't want to do that though I think I'll just take it out again pull it out pull the take up reel out have to pull up on this to get this out of here and put it back on the original film side but um and put this back in there don't lose it uh, by the way the, and concerning this Zeiss camera here you see this this camera has as I showed before has the, the window close to this edge and this one has the, on the bottom so you think well that must be uh, the 6x45 no, this is a 6x9 camera it's just that uh, the the film goes through the camera this way so uh, it's that the larger the largest frame size the 6x9 frame size and by the way this camera is a, a nifty little thing you can close that window I think that there's you know some danger of light getting in there especially if you're taking uh, exposures where the sun's behind you and the sun might get right in that little window and and uh, fog the film or expose it somewhat so they put the little a little uh, gizmo on there I've seen 35 millimeter cameras that have a, uh, a little shutter on the eyepiece on the on the uh, like SLRs that have a shutter on the eyepiece that prevent light from getting inside for the same reason of course the, the with the 120 film is the paper backing which which helps prevent that from happening but for instance uh, 220 film did not have a paper back and I might as well just mention that while, while we're here uh, 220 film was twice as long as 120 film and uh, it had a paper leader like this has but when you got up to the film it was film there was no paper backing and that was because the, they, they had to fit the film on the same size spool as 120 and obviously if you put paper and film in there it would never fit on the spool it would be too wide so the 220 film had no paper backing and obviously that that made it uh, so that it's kind of hard to 
put in a camera with a window to to count the uh, the frames because there's no paper back on it with the printed the numbers on it. So you pretty much had to use a camera with a mechanical counter. 220 film was introduced in 1965, so I assume that most cameras uh, were like that at that point. Um, so 620 film was used by Kodak, was introduced in 1931, intended as an alternate to 120, uh, and supposedly it was for the purpose of allowing manufacture of smaller cameras, which didn't exactly work out because, well, this is a big camera that uses 620, and there are other smaller cameras that use 120, so not exactly. Uh, the 127 film, of course, is much smaller and could could what did could and did go into smaller cameras. Um, so 620 film not available anymore. Although if you look in B and H or various other camera stores online, you can it says they have 620 film, but the the trick to that is that. It, 620 film is actually dimensionally the same as 120 film, but it's on a different spool, a slightly different spool. So if you look at the uh, 120 reel between the edge of the spindle in the middle to the edge of this flange is about 8 millimeters. And if you look at that same dimension on the 620 spool, it's also 8 millimeters. So basically the amount of film that can fit there is about the same. You know, the, the size of the spindle in the middle does make a, somewhat of a difference, but uh, this film, this film will fit on this spool. So what 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 you're doing if you buy it from, from B&H or, or somebody else is that they have gone to the trouble to take the 120 film and to go into a dark room and roll the 120 film onto a 620 spool. But um, I prefer doing that myself, which is not a big deal. What you have to do is you have to actually do it twice. You have to roll the 120 film onto another spool, either a 120 or a 620. Roll it onto a 120 film that way. And then so that the film still is going in the right direction, the counter is working in the right direction, you have to wind it back onto a 620 spool. So basically you sit there like, a, like an idiot in a dark room. And you do this. You know, all the way onto one roll, and then you do it again back onto the uh, the other roll, making sure that you're not winding it back onto this 120 roll because that would be kind of stupid. <clears throat> but <clears throat> after you do that, you just use it as normal, and the 620 spools will fit into the 620 cameras. Now you'll you'll find some people saying that uh, you can use a 120 spool and a 620 camera and there's some cameras that'll fit but it's very tight and uh, I don't think it's worth it because you may rip the tape in the middle of the spool it may, may come apart and um, some cameras you just can't fit it at all so uh, I think it's worth doing the respooling now as far as 127 film obviously you can see that 127 film is not the same dimension the edge to edge dimension is different so there have been uh, various uh, companies there was a company called ECFI that was from Croatia that made 127 film all the way into uh, 2012 and there's also a Canadian company um, Blue Fire that appears to make 127 film but um, I'm not sure if it's consistently done or if it's made in batches and they sell it and then you you know then it becomes not available. I'm not sure how it works, but I think that in, in any in any event that what these 127 films are is 120 film that's both re-rolled onto a smaller spool but also cut down. So if you look around on the internet, there are, you can see videos of people re-rolling 120 film onto 620 spools and also. There's a guy that cuts down uh, 127 film with a cigar cutter. And uh, I've tried it, and it doesn't come out too, that great. Um, so I've usually bought the 127 film, but I've re-rolled my 620 film myself. <clears throat> uh, 
By the way, both of these films were uh, discontinued in 1995, which to me seems like it's not that long ago, but it's 20 years now. Um, so I think that's about it. If I think of anything else, I'll let you know. I think I'll, I'll, I'll also I'll publish a little table I have of the uh, nominal sizes, the aspect ratios, the actual physical sizes, and the number of exposures for the four different films that I that I talked about today: six four five, six by six, six by seven, and six by nine. So have fun, take pictures. One other thing about six twenty and one twenty seven, and that's the spools. Um, if you buy a six twenty camera chances are that when you open it up like this one that there's going to be an empty spool of film or empty spool on the film side because in roll film cameras like I said the film gets rolled from the film side all the way to the take up spool side so basically there, there usually will be a uh, empty spool on the film side which you would then take and put onto the take up side and then the new reel would go on the film side so uh, when you do buy a camera when you do buy a 620 camera or 127 camera chances are fairly good that you're going to have a an empty spool there um, you can also look on eBay and there are usually people selling 620 spools uh, that you can pick up and 127 spools as well same thing with 127 spool spools if you buy a uh, you know a brownie holiday camera or a 127 uh, you know any camera that uses the 127 film this generally speaking there'll be a, uh, a an empty spool that you can use um, one thing to worry about though is that if you for instance if you buy let's say a, a roll of uh, color film and you're not going to do color developing in your dark room or even if you don't have a dark room and you don't do black and white film whatever it is if you're going to send the film out you have to make sure that you impress upon the people that are doing the developing that they send you the 620 reel back because otherwise it's going to cost you money you know the the, the point of uh, these these cameras that use the reel that the can't typically get I mean every time you take a roll of 120 and you 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 fire it off and you you, you end up with all these these spools I have like a, a I have this thing here that's full of all different spools you know and I have 127 spools I have 620 spools and I have um, uh, the 120 spools but 120 spools you'll, you'll have plenty of because you can buy the film but the uh, others you have to sort of make a collection and uh, this, is, this is an interesting uh, 120 spool this one kind of has got flat spots on it and this one's round I don't know there's this all different ones you'll also find metal ones in some of the old cameras and actually somewhere I have some of the ones that have a wood spindle with the metal flanges they're all still usable but um, you know hoard your 620 spools and make sure you get them back from from uh, photo labs and uh, you know the other thing is that if you if you only have one or two 620 spools you'll only be able to re-roll one or two rolls so I, I kind of try to collect them as much as I can because if I want to roll four or five uh, spools with with film that means I got, got to use five of my 620 spools and then I uh, got to make sure that they don't you know, get legs and go anywhere so um, that was it and uh, have fun take pictures